Similarly, he was holding a cup in Chaitanya, and similarly, um, Lord Rama had to deal with all the protocols that you have in India for uh, marriage, and he had to um, do some kind of rearrange of six kirtis Hunting game plan that you have to try to follow when you go out there in the morning early on in the day. So we'll talk more about that in part two if you have any other questions. Or if you have any other questions, it is there's no shortage. the budget presentation now. As a matter of fact, I'll change uh, the format. I know we have the budget workshop planning action, so we'll get into the budget presentation tonight. Uh, so the journey of uh, the budget process continues uh, for the last couple plus months. Uh, we have been uh, providing you updates, you know, starting off with uh, the governor's executive budget proposal uh, and, and subsequently presenting the district's uh, proposed budget, two components we have presented already, uh, administrative component and the capital component. And uh, tonight uh, we want to present the, the program component and program component, uh, as we know, is the, the essence, the crux of the, the budget. So we'll uh, walk you through the program component, uh, but prior to that, we'll we'll give you a quick update on what's happening uh, in uh, what or what has happened in the recent days uh, in relation to the uh, the COVID stimulus American Rescue Plan uh, Act uh, package. Uh, what has what has come out so far? Uh, we'll uh, we'll give you a. Uh, a snapshot summary of that. So we'll not bore you with things that we have already discussed. Uh, so, okay, I, I should be looking at the screen. Okay, I'm looking at over there. Okay, got it. So the governor's executive budget proposal uh, that we have talked about it, uh, 
there's not much to talk about today. And Governor's executive budget proposal at this point time point of time uh, has become insignificant of or or of no relevance. And I'll tell you why, you know, uh, shortly. So uh, we're going to jump to uh, the the federal stimulus package. Uh, uh, some aspects, some concerns we had uh, under the governor's budget. Uh, we're going to cover those things very shortly. But uh, uh, just touching on few quick things. You know, the the entire uh, only of off late. You know, I would say in the last year and a half, you know, we are talking about trillions, you know, like billions used to look uh, very big. Now we are talking trillions and uh, certainly larger packages are helpful for uh, faster recovery. We're not going to get into uh, many aspects of the, the federal package. We're going to stick to the education side of it uh, and the state related funding so it's it's a massive package building on uh, the CARES Act and uh, uh, and other stimulus funding packages that happened in the in the last uh, fifteen months. Uh, it's uh, bringing relief to uh, to state, local, and uh, uh, other agencies across the country, including school districts, and of course individuals started really getting the relief, uh, getting. Uh, the fourteen hundred dollars plus checks, uh, and uh, the New York State will be receiving about hundred billion dollars from this stimulus package uh, in various forms. So, for the last many many weeks, we have been talking about the governor's budget built on a a, a six billion dollar anticipated revenue from the state do i need to unmute or is there a message coming up here okay okay and and the governor also has been talking about uh, he needs 9 billion dollars to to address the the state uh, deficit so here uh, overall you know uh, Everything that has come is far, 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 far greater than what the governor was looking for. Uh, the state is receiving a $12.5 billion to, to address the gap the state budget has. And then additionally, the K through 12 school districts receiving another $9 billion. Uh, I'm not going to go through reading all of it only because all of this is subject to change. So we are waiting for the individual state aid runs, individual school district allocations. So hopefully by next meeting, if not uh, definitely before April 1st, we should know the detailed breakdown of uh, what uh, each district, including Freeport will be receiving. And overall in you know, a countrywide, you know, another $2.75 by billion, billion is going for supporting private schools, uh, the digital divide that we have been talking about and, and how well the district has been able to take care of it uh, for the last uh, 15 plus months. Uh, finally, you know, we'll be seeing some relief, you know, $7.1 billion is coming for to address uh, the technology related gaps. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, this is building on uh, two other packages that have come in the last uh, uh, year or so, uh, 2.2 trillion CARES Act, uh, and then uh, the CRRSA Act uh, of $900 billion in December. So what happens uh, is governor presents the governor's executive budget proposal, and then the state, uh, the Senate, comes out with it, with their own one house bill. Assembly comes out with their one house bill. So the process happens three ways and then the, the three 
top people get into a room and they start negotiations and that's exactly what's happening and i expect this negotiations to be easy this is really not about where do we find the money where do we cut this is really about we have the money how do we make sure that's all allocated properly and how do we make sure it gets to where it's supposed to get so i'm expecting the negotiations to be uh, faster easier and i'm expecting the the budget adoption to happen sooner than april 1st so typically as you know from the past the budget gets adopted uh, in the wee hours of uh, of uh, march 31st uh, so i'm hoping things to happen sooner i may not go through all of the things that said but uh, both the proposals are are pretty strong uh, both the proposals acknowledge a lot of things both the proposals reject some of the things that we have been advocating for things to happen so i'll touch on few things so so you you see that uh, both the proposals uh, uh, have an additional 3.5 billion dollars over what the governor has already proposed uh, in his budget uh, the things that are highlighted here i uh, i'm glad finally 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 they're not, they're acknowledging the foundation aid that we all have been advocating for for many years now and finally uh, and it's happening only i i would say it's all because of the uh, the 1.9 trillion package and first time they are acknowledging it and first time they are particularly the senate has language uh, indicating that it should be fully funded over the next 3 years and this this year meaning 21 22 at least in you know, every district uh, getting to the allocation at at least 60% of their full foundation aid so we shall see how this will uh, uh, take shape and uh, you may recall uh, in the governor's budget uh, the governor was trying to collapse uh, 11 different aids into one single service aid that he, that is being rejected by both uh, the senate and uh, the assembly and that's restoration of another 693 million dollars into the the state aid in addition to the 3.5 billion dollars so we also are seeing some uh, i'm impressed with senate proposal uh, very often assembly proposal is a uh, lot more generous than the senate proposal but uh, senate's proposal here is uh, uh, far greater than the assembly proposal so i'm keenly looking to see how the pre k full day kindergarten funding is going to come out uh, Uh, quite contrast here assembly proposing additional 75 million and the state uh, senate proposing 500 million dollars uh, we also recall that uh, the governor was taking away reimbursing any of the districts for prior year claims you know for example if you if a district has missed out on something a year and they file next year okay we're not going to give you any longer so the governor was going to take away about uh, 35 million dollars uh, or so uh, uh, so the senate is proposing uh, re rejecting the governor's proposal in restoring uh, 18.7 million dollars uh, in the prior year claims the star reimbursement that the governor included in his proposal uh, he was doing so uh, as a uh, as a presentation part to be able to get more uh, federal aid uh, i don't think it's all necessary so both houses are rejecting that so that's uh, there are many more components uh, in uh, in those proposals uh, i'm also just happy to say that uh, uh, the proposals both of them uh, supporting the ptech uh, funding continuing into the future years um uh, both proposals talk about uh, affordable uh, broadband uh, being provided to uh, to our students which we have 
already done. Uh, so we we hope to get uh, reimbursements through the E-rate. Uh, uh, there is also a, um, a proposal with regard to increasing the the fund balance uh, uh, holdings by the school districts that would allow the school districts to to tackle any unanticipated expenses. So the the proposal is really to increase the the fund balance flexibility from four to eight percent, and there is a very strong uh, support uh, from both sides for all of these things. So we hope for more news uh, today. Uh, Senate, uh, Senator Schumer has uh, has announced uh, two point five billion dollars. Uh, for all the upstate uh, school districts. Uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it's in addition or it was really providing a breakdown of already the existing dollars that's coming to New York State. I'm not sure whether there's going to be an announced by him now for the downstate uh, uh, tomorrow or sooner. But I'm expecting to have the, the breakdown and then um, we'll come back to you with uh, sort of uh, uh, finalizing the, the draft budget from the administration side. So the proposed expenditures uh, increase, as you may recall from our presentation, first presentation going back in February, uh, a $5.9 million increase, uh, which translates to about 3.13%. Uh, so we covered the administrative component, we covered the capital component today, we're going to be looking at uh, the $153.5 million of the program component. Uh, you're seeing a $4.4 million increase in that component uh, and a significant amount uh, pertains to COVID expenses that we still have to, to budget for into the next year. So this time I'm going to turn it over to um, Mr. Karambia. Good evening and thank you, Dr. Kutchum. Um, as you just stated, um, we're gonna go over the program component of the budget this evening. <clears throat> and if uh, we're gonna start off with um, proposed staffing that um, is not in the budget at this time, but um, we are um, considering. Um, so district-wide, we're um, increasing the bilingual teachers proposal of 2.0 um, FTE. Um, we're also adding, uh, we're recommending adding 3.0 in additional teachers K to 12, um, 3.0 FTE assistance uh, K to uh, K to 12, 2.0 in uh, technology support staff, um, a 1.0 administrator for instructional technology and 3.0 FTEs uh, for deans, uh, two at the high school and one at Dodd Middle School. Also inclu in included in this uh, next year's proposed budget are the following items. Uh, for the ELA portion of our budget, um, we're including a uh, Fontes and Pinnell classroom expansion for grades five, five through six. six, currently in place for pre-K through grade four. Um, for our math curriculum, we're uh, introducing Go Math into Math K-8. It's a digital and print resource aligned to next generation learning standards. And then uh, we're going to expand fully to all K-4 schools, um, the math, the ST math, which is currently um, at Bayview and New Visions. On the instructional technology side, uh, we're coding curriculum grades five through 12. We're, we're uh, proposing to increase licensing for programs used for technology-centered learning and for new um, high school CTE pathway assessment. Uh, we're also planning to expand our summer school program, uh, K to eight. Uh, we're projecting increased enrollment from approximately 300 to over 500 uh, students. And we're also uh, adding support and enrichment opportunities in academics, athletics, and the arts. 
Um, as Dr. Kutcher mentioned, um, you know, in next year's budget, um, we are continuing to um, uh, budget for COVID expenses. Um, and this is a, a snapshot of what we spent, what we spent this year. Uh, so you can see uh, Chromebooks, microphones, webcams, a million two. Um, we increased our substitute teachers to fill in. That was almost 400,000. Uh, the desk guards in all the buildings and the materials for screens that are, you know, in front of uh, support staff, uh, administrators, that's 784,000. Uh, we also had installed and purchased uh, motion center, uh, sensor um, hand-free uh, faucets at uh, 562,000. Um, PPE, sanitizers, maintenance supplies, um, 187,000. Uh, communication technology, which is for hotspots and other items, 65,000. Uh, we increased overtime due to um, enhanced cleaning in all of our buildings, 39,000. And we also contracted with scope for emergency uh, childcare services at almost $7,000 giving us a total of $3.2 million. So now we get to the components of the uh, program, um, component of the, the component, the functions of the program component, excuse me. As uh, Dr. Kutchum stated earlier, the uh, proposed budget is 153.6 million. That's up 4.4 million or almost 2.97%. Uh, um, and you'll see through the major lines, uh, teaching regular school is at uh, proposed at 63.7 million. That's up a million dollars or 1.7%. Um, programs for children with disabilities is at 30.6 million. It's down a little bit, down uh, 244,000, uh, 245,000. Special schools teaching is up 211,000. Instructional media up 163,000. Pupil personnel services is up a million five. That once again is mainly due to projected um, COVID expenses for next year at a million four. Uh, pupil transportation up 148,000. Um, and that is the contractual CPI increase uh, per the Department of Transportation for next year. And then employee benefits 1.6 million or 5% once again, for a total of 4.4 uh, million increase or 2.97%. Okay, um, just going through the, the line, the actual components. So the um, legal services um, relates to um, the legal services relating to the program portion of the budget. You see that's flat year to year. In-service training is for our staff development. Once again, that is flat. Teacher textbooks, uh, regular schools, you'll also see contractual salaries, uh, salaries for tutors, uh, budgets, uh, costs for textbooks, BOCI services, supplies for all our departments, uh, including health, music, art, reading, math, and science. Here are the textbooks. We also uh, included in our budget next year general general supplies at the building levels for uh, uh, also included for enrichment. And here are the departments for equipment and supplies, math, science, and art. Reading and phys ed equipment and supplies. Music department. Um, science research program, business, family and computer science, once again, equipment and supplies, technology, LEP, automotive science department, health, and our ROTC program that we provide for our students. And our special ed um, department, uh, once again, includes salaries for teachers, assistants, uh, BOCES services, um, evaluations, tuition for 4201 schools, um, uh, bilingual evaluations uh, and other evaluations, contract services, 
we spoke about uh, summer school. There's the increase that uh, we mentioned before. Um, other for uh, after school programs, school library and media, once again, supplies by uh, building and department, computer assisted instruction. Um, you know, both we uh, purchased a lot of equipment slash uh, services through BOCES. We, you know, also uh, include software purchases, which we mentioned uh, up front initially in regards to uh, the Go Math program. And then we have pupil personnel services, which include att the attendance, guidance health services, psychological services, social worker services. And then we have co-curricular activities for our students, inter-school athletics, and all of these supplies uh, by team for athletics specific. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the 1.4 million for COVID expenses that we feel we need to um, budget for, for the next school year to make sure we um, keep up with um, the necessary um, cleaning and the equipment and the supplies that we need. We have school uh, transportation services, the, uh, the office uh, supplies, the salaries, and once again, the uh, contract transportation broken down by in district, private and parochial special ed. And then um, our um, benefits for the um, program component. Uh, we pay towards the TRS retirement system, um, social security, unemployment, health and dental. And once again, our total program um, projected budget for next year is 154 million point six, up 4.4 million. We also um, uh, have projects that we included in the budget next year that are part of transfer to capital and also from our capital reserve. You'll see um, them listed. We have updated them for additional projects that we intend to uh, you know, move forward with uh, next year. There is going to be a proposition on our um, ballot this year. It's going to be proposition number three to um, expend 2.5 million from the capital reserve for the list of projects that are listed here. Also this evening, you will see a um, resolution um, to uh, show that these items for, it's called a CEQA uh, resolution that says these, um, these projects are type two, which means that there's no impact uh, to, um, you know, the outside, um, the grounds, the air that, um, <clears throat> the board must approve in order to move forward for these projects. And here's the um, copy of the resolution um, asking for authorization to spend the 2.5 million from the capital reserve for those specific projects. So this is the um, original uh, foundation aid um, issues that we spoke about. I don't, Dr. Kutchman, I don't know if you wanna to speak to these. Or, um, but um, with the new legislation, um, these should um, go away. Once again, a graph showing our foundation aid uh, that we lost. Advocacy um, that we brought up from our first um, you know, budget uh, meeting items that we feel that are issues uh, that need to be uh, brought to the uh, Senate or the, the assembly um, and our legislators to uh, you know, help us with these expenses or and or issues. And um, these are the, the next uh, uh, dates to, uh, regarding the budget. So the next meeting is uh, next week, week from today, the 24th. On April 7th, we have a budget meeting, a board planning and budget meeting. On April 20th, we have an action meeting and we adopt the school budget. On May 5th is the public hearing slash we're gonna have a planning meeting. And then on May 18th is the annual budget vote and trustee election. Any questions? 
Thank, thank you, Sam. And I think uh, it appears that okay, you know, this is the biggest part of the budget. You know, one fifty less million dollars, one fifty three point five, and uh, so we, you know, we have gone through so many pages very quickly. Uh, but whether we like it or not, there's a big part of the budget, including the program component, you know, that are this man mandated for contractual costs to, to almost like, to the degree of uh, uh, 95 percent of the, the things that you've seen, you know. So you know, you know quick summary of what that increases about the whole thing. Uh, just the last finish of the, the benefits, you know, which is again mandated cost related to, to retirement or health insurance and so on. And the right way, we have a million and a half. And, and COVID expenses, you know, as much as we have had up to this point in time, $3.3 million. We're driven to the, <clears throat> to the degree of $1.4 million for the next year's budget. So that makes it one and a half million dollars, and the rest are contractual uh, increases uh, in various uh, budget codes, uh, and including transportation, and so on. So, uh, so if you have any questions on uh, on any page, or overall questions uh, on the program component, please uh, do so and. Uh, the pages that were shown relating to the capital funds, you know, whether it's from the capital reserve funds or whether it's from the projects that are included in the budget, we, we have made some, uh, some changes to what we have seen in the presentation two or three weeks ago. Uh, there are some projects on the way, and then since the announcement of the 1.9 trillion dollars in this package. Some projects will be kept on hold, not knowing what the outcome would be, not knowing whether the challenges related to all the additional expenses we have incurred, whether to proceed or not. So now we have clarity. So some projects, for example, the one we may have seen from the past of the, the Columbus uh, major project relating to the facade and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, project relating to to the basic goals uh, and the schools in the final state of Washington. So now we can take off. So what we have done is taken those into account as we can proceed. Those projects have been substituted with new projects that you may have seen, for example, the, the roofing project that's uh, very much needed at that instant. And the roofing project at uh, some of the uh, the masonry related work that we have to take care of taking the same those projects have been substituted. And if they were not substituted, then we could have done it. So any questions in the case? It's quite a lot, but we will bring up everything together. Once we have uh, information related to the ceiling, we'll, we'll come back to you to give a, an overall presentation subsequently. And, yeah. Um, and I don't know if I missed this, but the COVID expenses that are listed on page 17, is that the budget COVID expenses or is that what we have, you know, expenses that we have in March? Uh, the part, part of that 3.2, uh, some expenses we incurred uh, from March to June of last year. For example, the, the Chromebooks and uh, uh, the microphone, some of them. We had to start off to be ready for September. So part, part of that expense was the 1920, but a good majority of the rest of the expenses, they're all of 2021. 
finger. Um, but I see that the reading part, it starts it starts off with zero and then it goes to thirty-four thousand times. And is anything changing now that you know the size of this is on the phone book from the school using all the textbooks? Um, and what is that reading part of it? That's um, Mary's. That's Mary's. So what you're referring to is the um, curriculum expansion that's happening at Lee's FMP classroom at our reading program, K through four, and I'm sure it's being expanded to um, class three, five, and six. So it's not textbook as in a thick textbook that the kids are getting. We, that is just the curriculum materials that are used in their digital component. Right? Okay. So that's part of the component that's being added. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an application for master's level. And if we take something, we will do it. 
And we also have come to know the Deputy Commissioner of Education of the State of Connecticut will be joining tomorrow for that, that event. Okay. 
So our reopening plan uh, expansion continues and we shared the information. So as we speak, you know, this week, uh, Freeport High School 9 through 12 uh, started the transition of uh, uh, students who were attending Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Now all of them together be able to attend five days uh, starting uh, Monday, uh, 9th and 12th grade uh, have started to return for five days. And then starting um, Monday, 22nd, 10th and 11th graders will be able to come back attending five days. So, and of course, the, the five students, uh, the, the students who are remote will continue to receive five days of synchronous uh, uh, instruction. And six through eight, you know, beginning Friday, March 19th, students who are currently four days per week will be able to attend uh, five days uh, in person. But they're going to be alternating. Uh, the cohort one and cohort two will begin alternating in person on Fridays on an alternate on an alternating basis. So I know there's uh, um, Newsday information about the the third through eighth grade testing. Uh, the Board of Regents uh, had a uh, meeting uh, recently and uh, uh, you may or may not be following, but uh, the New York State Education Department has been uh, uh, asking for a waiver with the US Department of Education with regard to the uh, the testing, as you may recall, uh, last spring, uh, due to the the pandemic, the the testing was cancelled, and unfortunately, the waiver has not come out yet. But uh, as a requirement, you know, the state still had have to get prepared, you know, because the testing is uh, sometime in April. So the state has come up with a much shorter version of the uh, the tests to be administered for third through eighth grade uh, going from two sessions to one session and then even that one session is going to be a very uh, shortened version so the districts have to start preparing for that and between now and before the tests whether the waiver is going to be granted or not uh, uh, we are not sure so We'll wait for that information to to come through, but in the meantime, we have to follow the the guidelines provided by the New York State uh, Education Department. Uh, uh, there's a the testing window is more uh, longer this time. Tremendous flexibility is being provided uh, by the State Education Department, but uh, uh, I'm not sure whether. The, the assessment has uh, any meaning or whether this assessment will lead to any meaningful data. Uh, so we shall wait and see and uh, uh, more information on this will be coming forth. Uh, with regard to the same things in the regions uh, we had mentioned in the past, again, the state is, is really required under the, uh, the federal guidelines as a uh, and so on. So there are four regions uh, uh, that will likely to happen if there's no waiver coming. Algebra one, uh, English language arts, living environment and uh, uh, physical setting, earth science. The rest of the regions are all canceled. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll keep you uh, informed. We'll bring more information on that. Uh, uh, the hashtag Freeport Reads uh, initiative uh, is uh, our annual launch is going to be happening this week, uh, uh, March 22nd. Uh, uh, so a lot of information will be has been already uh, distributed coming along, uh, uh, coming along more uh, in the next few days. Uh, the fall sports season has begun and uh, uh, so far, things have been uh, going well, uh, but I'm sorry to say that uh, this weekend game, uh, football game, uh, is uh, not happening. You know, uh, there was a 
positive case uh, in the in the visitors uh, team so they'll they'll not be able to take part so the spectator policy we have been kind of looking and uh, changing as much we can uh, as things started improving as you may recall uh, uh, when we started a week or 10 days ago we wanted to have only uh, two spectators per uh, per athlete uh, from only our teams you know but starting now uh, we're going to be also allowing two spectators per visiting player also uh, only for outdoor games and uh, so each visiting will have team will have a uh, a supply of roster they'll have a supervisor and all of that will be managed and everything all the protocols will be will be in place uh, uh senior genevieve uh, himmelberg you know i hope i pronounced correctly uh, was selected to Newsday all Long Island cheerleading teams. So congratulations to, to senior Genevieve. <clears throat> and senior Janaya Ar Arce was also selected to Newsday all Long Island cheerleading's uh, second team. So all the, the the soccer, the the girls swim, um, all girls volleyball, uh, all the these games are being on live stream or YouTube. So those who cannot go, uh, please visit our website uh, to log into live stream or watch on YouTube. Uh, there are a lot of exciting things happening relating to CubeSat. I can't tell you like how proud of uh, this project, how proud of the kids and. Uh, uh, amazing people, uh, great minds uh, are able to to provide uh, uh, interactive sessions to our students. So that's that's it for now, uh, President. Kite back to you. You want to continue with the uh, the meeting? The agenda. Okay. Mr. Roberts, did we have any questions or comments? No, we didn't. No, no questions or comments at the time. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll continue with items for action number six. Uh, Maria, please. Items for action uh, 6.1 consent agenda items be resolved that the Board of Education of the Freeport Union Free School District hereby approves the following items 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4. Can I get a second? All in favor? Hello? Aye. <laughs> Oppose? Abstention? Motion carried. Seven other items for action. Mr. Elody. 7.1. Mm hmm. We have resolved that the Board of Education of Freeport Union Free School District hereby accepts a letter of resignation from the proposed retirement from the following members as listed. Do you need the names? Yes, please do. Amanda Baldani, Timothy Ella Benson, Robin Lee. Maria Wallachuk, uh, Susan Mandel Port, Lori McGinney, Lisa Bernestek, and Josephine Jensen. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. 7.2, education. 7.2, education, approval of an agreement. Be resolved that the Board of Education of the Freeport Union Free School District hereby approves the following agreement as written below. All in favor? 
Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Motion carried. Finance, 7.3. Finance, 7.3. Approval of the capital reserve fund proposition. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. 7.4. 7.4 finance SEQRA resolution for various improvement projects. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. <clears throat> 7.5. Mr. Ellaby. 7.5. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor, oppose, abstention, motion carry. 7.6, Maria. 7.6, finance, acceptance of donation. Would you please read it? Mm -hmm. Do you resolve that the Board of Education of the Freeport Union Free School District hereby accepts with gratitude a donation of 4,000 adult size masks and 1,500 child size masks for the staff and students of the Freeport School District from the Freeport Merrick Rotary Club. Be it further resolved that the Board of Education of the Freeport Union Free School District hereby accepts with gratitude a donation of 600 child size masks for the students of the Freeport School District from the Hicksville South Rotary Club. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carried. Um, other reports to the board? Uh, any board comments? I just want to say congratulations to all the retirees and uh, Ms. Muldowney, thank you so much you're here. So La queremos muchísimo. And um, I also want to say um, it's, it's hard to believe that three weeks ago Mr. Kai was here, but I want to say thank you to everyone who worked on the tribute that the school district put together. Um, it was beautiful. And as a board member, it was, I really appreciate it. So thank you, Mr. Pancham and everybody who worked on that. Mr. Ellaby? Uh, <clears throat> congratulations um, to all that are retiring. Um, we, you're gonna be dearly missed, but I guess we always have a second career, whatever that is, you know, uh, like coming back uh, to help out when we call you. <laughs> right, Mandy? <laughs> um, and also, um, let's see, I had something else. Oh, the presentation, uh, very well done. And uh, lots of information and a lot for us to read up and understand and um, that's it now do we have executive session yes Ms. Lincoln. We do? Yeah. Okay. okay I guess we're going to move on to executive session now superintendent's comment if you yeah, may superintendent well, comment yeah. again yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to take a moment to uh, to really uh, recognize, you know, all our colleagues, wonderful colleagues, after their amazing, amazing years of service uh, to our children, uh, uh, well-deserved uh, retirement. You know, congratulations to uh, Josephine, Lisa, Lori, Susan, Maria, Robin, uh, uh, Tim, and of course Mandy. So congratulations, and Mandy, uh, I know I thought I saw you before, I'm glad you're here. So uh, I just can't tell you, uh, you know, how uh, grateful we are for your the 27 plus years of service and, uh, and, and even more number of years of your service to Freeport community and uh, the great difference uh, that you have made, uh, we're going to be celebrating I'm hoping we'll be able to meet in person for all our all our retirees to to uh, be honored. I'm pretty confident it will happen as time goes by. So 
congratulations to you. And yes, can we can clap again. <laughs> Tim, actually, Tim Halverson, you know, known him for a long time. Uh, I saw him the day before. He didn't say anything. The next day, <laughs> I found out from Mr. Roberts, he was retiring. <laughs> 41 years. Oh, my God. You know, wow. that's, uh, that's awesome. And uh, I know I've known uh, all of them uh, or many of them in person. And Robin Reese, uh, uh, who works in uh, the personnel office, you know, like there are people who, who do so much silently making things happen. Uh, uh, Robin is one of them uh, who has uh, so s seamlessly making sure the entire civil service uh, operations of the district are carried out properly. So congratulations to Robin and, and most certainly to, to Maria Susan Lurie Lisa and Josephine, uh, President, President Lancaster, uh, may I request for uh, an executive session for board development? Okay. okay. Um, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, I um, forgot to um, thank the Rotary Club, the Frequent Merrick, and the, um, the Hicksville Rotary Club for the uh, mask yes. that we received. And, um, you know, they were, we put to very good use. And yes, we can move on to executive session. And I guess we'll be returning. Uh, there, uh, there's no action, there's no action. items to come uh, to take after the executive session, after okay. the board development. Uh, okay. We'll come back so to, then, to close the meeting subsequently. Okay, so then the next meeting will be March 24th Correct. at 7.30. Good night. Post meeting, meeting adjourned. Yeah. Can yeah. I get a yeah. second? Motion to. Huh? Motion, motion to. Yes, I was Double. just I was just saying that. Double. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor, opposed, abstention, motion carried.